Hello. Hello. And we are here today with Joey for oh. the uh, Last Roman campaign for Toto Attila and for a live uh, let's play on uh, the Visigothic uh, Kingdom. And yes. It's good to see you again. You are back with I'm us. I'm back. Yes, you are back. That's it. You are back with us and for a live stream. So it's perfect. Um, so today we're going to play... Um, the Visigothic Kingdom, so one of the playable factions for the next uh, campaign pack for Toto Attila, the last Roman. Out twenty fifth. Yeah, that's right. This on twenty fifth. Pre order now. So I think we have done uh, a few live streams already. So uh, you've seen Matty and Craig doing a few of them. Uh, I think we have so the let's play on the Roman expeditions already. And today, yeah, we thought we we're gonna show you how to play the. Uh, uh, or we're gonna try to show you how to play the uh, Visigothic Kingdom. And uh, yeah. Uh, You're gonna try. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna try. Watch and read the comments uh, to warm ourselves back into coming back to a stream with you guys. And uh, I think you know how I feel about cavalry. More horses, more resources, Nico. So get those. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to focus on the cav, but I'm not really good with it. So, uh, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do my best. Neither I promise. Not. So um, here we are, Visigothic Kingdom. So um, the challenge is easy. So I think it, it's definitely one of the. Uh, one of the factions to start. Um, if you haven't played much of the uh, Grand Campaign but want to have like a different context, I would definitely recommend this one. And we, we're gonna have a quick look at the uh, faction traits. If you want more details about this uh, this faction, uh, we suggest you uh, visit the official wiki. Mm. We always uh, publish a lot of details about those factions, the units they have and stuff like that. And there's and full information on all factions yeah. there and what you can expect with units additions, which there aren't any for the Visigoths, but there are for uh, the others. So have a look for the full details. But faction traits, what we've got here... Yeah, so uh, persuasive. Um, persuasive, high rate yeah. of religious conversions in all owned provinces. So what is this like? So uh, so the, the red part is like essentially that's your uh, your kingdom, that's the region to that start re with. Relatively big. Yeah, but um, bear in mind the the campaign is is it's a different scale to the one we had in the grand campaign. Mm. So in this one, it's much more focused, so more detailed. So essentially, you need more time to go through this uh, this territory. And same, if you do your your conquest, you you need more time, more turns, because this is twelve turns per year. So oh. you definitely more you know you need more time to do everything. Um, um, and um, seeing this first trait, so that's really good if you um, if you expand very quickly. So you have uh, you know you you minimize the risk of having uh, mm. uh, civil wars or, or like uh, many you know like uh, rebel armies taking uh, taking your your territories back and and so that's that's a good thing, uh, especially uh, rate of religious conversion because that gives a lot of bonuses. It mm. helps definitely helps. The second one, tolerance. Tolerance, no public order penalties from immigration in own provinces. That can't be a bad thing. It's definitely a good thing. Uh, so um, you still have like a few uh, uh, like uh, nomad. Uh, Factions. So if if they come on your on your territory, you won't have penalties. So that will definitely oh, help you. So those two traits they, they work well together. And uh, if if you want to expand a lot, and you don't want to be enemy with with everyone, you still want to have like a few factions. Uh, maybe you know some sort of nomad factions that still mm -hmm. remain your ally. Um, it's definitely very good. Um, I could see those two traits working together very well. And the last one is very interesting: reformation of the Western Empire control. So, uh, yeah, control 40 regions to gain diplomatic options, join empire. 40 regions is a lot to manage. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not sure with, I don't, I'm not sure if we start with uh, a lot of regions, but 40 is, it already starts being a lot. Um, but, I mean, think about it, you have those two traits, so you're like, okay, it's gonna be not that difficult to, um, you know, expand 40 regions and focus a lot on all the uh, civic technologies. True, definitely made easier by the other two traits. Yeah, but, you know, you have to be careful if you expand too fast, other, other factions will, you know, they will start hating you because you become very powerful. So you have to be, you have to find the balance between, you know, expanding very fast and using those traits mm. and the civic, um, civic technologies to avoid, like, you know, having too many enemies and, um, having too many problems within your kingdom. So, yeah. Um, but I, I, I guess we already started the campaign with uh, a lot of enemies, so we're gonna have a look at that. Yeah. But yeah, join join empire is a new a new uh, diplomatic option we have in in this campaign, and essentially is is suggesting like asking the empire to a kingdom to join your your yours. So I think that's that's quite interesting. Nice. All right, I suggest we start with normal. 
Yeah, let's right? do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's jump to it. Let's do it. Just having a quick look at the commands as well. Commands, commands. Oh, commands. look, I recommend an attack on Marseille immediately. <laughs> Be careful. On your home turf. <laughs> home turf. Yeah, my, uh, my homelands. Um, I think uh, we have seen the cinematic uh, in like in the previous live stream, so I, I'm just going to skip this one and uh, jump in the campaign straight away. Because I'm that kind of guy. <laughs> they uh, they always want blood on these campaign walkthroughs. They don't like a diplomatic option. They don't like the... <laughs> no. I've tried it before. They hated it. Uh, it yeah. I, I guess you could compare the Confederation and John Empire. But obviously it's a different context. So yeah. you, you, the requirements would be different, right? So um, I think it's a little bit more... Or, if not, you know, much more t challenging in um, in this campaign pack to have another faction join your your kingdom than so. What it you was have to work a lot harder to join the empire than you would for join confederacy. Well, because that seemed to be like you just pay them enough, and then they'd be like, "All right then." No, I think there, are, you know, there would definitely be a lot of uh, mm. a lot of uh, requirements. Like, it, and it's, it's a twelve years, a twelve month, uh, twelve turns per year. Sorry, so. Um, it's not like you know you can wait just one turn and reuse the uh, the yeah. option. You have to work on it, and you have to be careful because if you work on it and spend a lot of resources and it works, and then other factions who liked you start being you know your enemy, then you know there is no turning back. You have to be careful yeah. on how you use those diplomatic options. So it's definitely like you know it's it's tactic. You have to use it wisely. What we've got here, hard won victories are threatened by the baleful and desperate eyes of the past. The beleaguered emperor sends his men to reclaim the foregone empire that will find only failure against this new kingdom. And our objective is survive until the following day, yeah. spring 535. Yeah, so... New bonus objectives have been added. So that's still uh, part of this uh, campaign pack. We already have it, you know, in Total Attila, the main campaign, the grand campaign. It's still there in this campaign pack. The, you know, the survivor aspect is still very important. So um, it, it's a different context, but you still have, you know, those um, events that, you know, uh, challenge your, your kingdom and your campaign, and you have to, to deal with, you know, those uh, natural events. So our, I'm going to have a quick look at the objectives. So survive. We've seen this one. Mm -hmm. uh, two Stab political actions. <laughs> Stab in the dark. That's the kind of thing we like to yeah. do with uh, with our spies. So carry out two political actions, including the following: assassinate. We're gonna do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> we do this one. Um, construct one building from the following recruitment grounds. Okay, I think I think we can do this one. Uh, Look, I mean, the reward itself definitely at this stage, the money's necessary, and it doesn't. I yeah. imagine it would take too much to kind of get that far in the tech tree of the building. Well, we'll, we'll have Hopefully. it. Maybe it's one of the early early buildings, so yeah. uh, it, it will make sense to have it. I'm My sure it is. My first Swaby! Oh, <laughs> oh amazing! <laughs> you like Swaby? Yeah, that was... Uh, if anyone remembers the Twitter... Um, what was it? Rome 2 puns. Yeah. And it was just all Swaby all the time. So I love that. This way. is in the game. <laughs> Beautiful. So, um, yeah, I control 18 settlements either by direct ownership or through uh, satrapies or military allies. So, obviously, that, that gives you, you know, three different paths to, you know, how you want to do your campaign. Either you want to be, you know, like a uh, diplomatic or you, you're like focusing on, on military campaigns and just, um, yeah, capture everything. All right, so uh, we have Forge Defensive or Military Alliance with the following faction, Ostrogothic Kingdom. That's going to be a little bit tricky. Yeah. We all kind of have a look at the diplomatic screen in a bit, and then bonus objective, be at war with the faction, Frankish Kingdom. Oh, oh dear you, what are you doing to me? It's like Frankish Kingdom being at war with them. It's like, no. <laughs> but I'm going to do it for today. I'm going to be at war with the Frankish Kingdom. All right, so that's the objectives, but the victory conditions. So uh, survive until the following date, spring 540. Okay, 40 settlements. Okay, and then so essentially this one is we'll, uh, we're gonna go to yeah the Frankish kingdom uh, quite a lot. Uh, yeah. Pronounce it. Well, this one. Yeah. 
November Bolonia. <laughs> no, yep. it's wrong. No, no, no. <laughs> Populania. Hmm? Populania? Populania? No, Novum Populania. <laughs> um, I'm, with. I'm gonna say those two in very French way uh, right. Provence and uh, Aquitaine. <laughs> Alright, I'll say it in a really English way uh, Provence and uh, Aquitaine. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Aquitaine. <laughs> exactly. So we we uh, we have to focus quite a lot on the uh, Frankish kingdom, and it's 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 a good thing because uh, the objectives uh, requires us to do it, so yeah. we can get easy money with that, and that's that's great. So I'm gonna have a quick look at the diplomacy. So uh, obviously, yeah, the um, Frankish kingdom is there. Is so it, is this who we need a defensive alliance with? No, that's no we Gothic. yeah, our struggle kingdom. We have to right. become friends with them. It's it's doing all right oh. for now, uh, but the Frankish kingdom, we have to be at war against us. So uh, it's, that's gonna be easy, and uh, Burgundians. I think we're gonna take care of them as well. So this campaign is easy. I think it's gonna be. It's not gonna be a problem to become friend with the Ostrogothic kingdom. I guess if I declare war uh, on Rome. They're gonna be very friendly but yeah let's have a look at what we have right now so uh faction ownership yeah that's right fertility is okay for now um 